Hello all. Welcome to the Windows API exploitation recipes for Red Blue teams at Pentester Academy. Now in this video, we are going to be looking at process memory reading basics. So the whole idea is how can we go ahead and read any other processes memory. Now to do this, one of the APIs we are going to look at is the tool help 32 read process memory API. So let's jump right in. Now, typically if you wanted to read process memory of, of any process system wide, it's a good idea to acquire debug privileges. Right, this would allow us to do a lot more things, including even writing to memory, uh, manipulating it, and all of that. So, so generally, if you can, it's a good idea to get debug privileges. Now, what can you do with reading a process's memory? Well, pretty much anything. You can search for passwords. You can search for any interesting information. You might be able to dump, you know, hashes, uh, tokens, whatnot. Right. So tool help 32 read process memory. This is the API we will be using. Uh, it's extremely simple to use. Give the process ID of the process whose memory you'd like to read. Pass the base address where you'd like to begin reading from, followed by the number of bytes to read. Now after this returns, it is going to fill in LP number of bytes read with the number of bytes which have been read. Right, which could be equal to what you've requested, may even be lesser or could even return uh, you know, zero or minus one or whatever error condition may be defined. Okay, so let's jump right in. So I have created two helper programs the first is called victim read write memory. Now this is really the victim process uh, which starts up, uh, goes ahead and writes a string to its memory and just waits so that an attacker can read its memory. <laughs> it's, it's just that simple. So let me actually go ahead and launch this. Let's have a look at the source code. And you'll see this is reasonably straightforward. We go ahead and initialize a message, allocate 100 bytes as what message points to, set that memory to all zeros, and write the string I am secure. Now after that, we print that string, the process ID, and the address in memory where that string is stored. And then we just wait for a get car. And this is the time when we run our attacker process, which reads process memory, okay? Now, if we hit an enter on get car, then it just prints that message again. Just to show you that uh, the memory itself may not have been altered in this case, okay? Just make sure that we go ahead and create 64-bit binaries. So the x64 is what should be selected. I'm going to go ahead do a rebuild solution. Okay. And then I'm going to open up a command prompt and change into this directory. So I'm going to go ahead, start a command prompt change to this directory. Let's run the binary. Now once it runs, it says PID is 2016, the message is I am secure, and this is the address where that message is stored in the processor's memory. Okay, great. So actually minimize this, minimize this, and now I'm going to go to the attacker read memory program. So let's go ahead, open this up. So this is actually going to use the tool help API to read the process memory. OK, 
Okay. So we started off, try to enable debug privilege if it is possible. Uh, and then we just straight away call tool help 32 read process memory, pass it the PID of the process, the address where to read from, the buffer, the length of the buffer, and eventually, of course, we get back the bytes read. Right, fairly simple. If this succeeds, we go ahead and print that to the screen. So let's build this. Let's open up a new command prompt. Change directory. And here we go. So this is the read process memory one. Let's go back, copy out this address. The PID, as we can see, is 2016, followed by the address in hex. And there you go, we succeeded. Now, the key point to remember is that, well, it is pretty much simple to read process memory uh, if both processes belong to the same user. So let's look at if, if this works by default if the processes belong to different users. So I'm going to have victim read write memory.exe running. So let that continue to run. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and invoke the attacker read memory one from another user's context. So do that. So actually first copy this out. Let's copy the binary. And I'm going to copy this to C drive so that the other user can, can access this easily. Paste it here. Okay. Also, I'm going to copy out this message so that we can copy the address and all that stuff. So which means I'm going to go back to my host machine open up notepad, paste that here, go back to the VM and switch user. So I'm going to switch over to another user by the name of John. So let's allow for Windows to do its little magic and allow us to log in as John. It's taking a little bit of time, though I have a good amount of memory allocated to this VM. Yep, there we go. Let's log in as John. Let's open up a command prompt. Change over to C drive. And we can see attacker read process memory is in there. Now let's 2016 is the PID and this is the address. So 2016 and this is the address. Now if you notice, tool help uh, 32 read process memory immediately tells us that access is denied, right? This is expected uh, simply because John doesn't have any privileges at this point to go ahead and read Vivek's uh, process memory. That's how it should be, I'm Vivek. <laughs> so now let's actually run this from a privilege prompt. 
so that SE debug privileges, the call which we have is actually granted. Now let's run this 2016, paste this. And there you go. If you notice, we can now read I am secure. Fantastic. So this is really how it is possible for us to go ahead and read other processes as memory. Now keep in mind when we say other process, that could mean one of the same user's process or any other user on the system, right? Uh, and when you are talking about any other user on the system, then the attacker binary, when it is running, would have to have the right privileges to look at other processes memory. Now, if you get SE debug privileges, as I've mentioned, well, it's a clean sweep. You can pretty much do this, right? Uh, provided, of course, it's not a protected process, as we've discussed before. Okay, so that's what I had in memory for this video. If you enjoyed your time uh, at Pentester Academy, please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the InfoSec community. Thank you.